everybody. Today I wanted to make a video with tips and tricks and hints on how to manage the autoimmune protocol. For those of you who are not familiar with it, the autoimmune protocol is a very restricted diet that is very helpful if you have an autoimmune condition. The idea is to eliminate any foods that you may be reacting badly to, give your body a chance to heal and to uh, for the inflammation in your body to decrease and to heal the gut which is where your immunity starts and then once you've done that and you've achieved some kind of healing and put real nutrition back into your body then you can start to try and reintroduce foods some you may reintroduce successfully and be able to eat again and some you may realize that you just react badly to and you can never eat them again so this is just how I managed to be on AIP or the autoimmune protocol and some of the things that have worked for me because it is very, it can be very difficult and um, anything that makes it easier, I say why not share that. So if you are attempting this diet or struggling with it, hopefully some of this will be helpful to you. My first tip if you want to try AIP is to try phasing it in. If you go from eating the way you normally eat to 100% strict AIP overnight, it's gonna be such a huge shock to the system and really hard to maintain. So I would suggest for a while, first eliminate gluten and then maybe eliminate nuts and then maybe eliminate the nightshade vegetables like potatoes and tomatoes and then eliminate dairy or, you know, just do it in stages so that you're not just taking away everything all at once, but that you're taking away one thing at a time and adjusting to that and figuring out what you can eat in the meantime. That could be more easy to maintain than just going like straight onto it. Now when you're eliminating all of these foods and food groups, please remember to also add things into your diet because one of the points of it is to add nutrition back and to achieve healing. So uh, remember to do things like make your bone broths and include that. and. Um, green leafy vegetables and a good variety of vegetables and things that are really going to give your body a lot of nutrients. I'd also recommend taking a good quality probiotic which will help with all of the gut healing that's going to be going on. My next tip is don't feel like you have to include lots of variety as you're getting used to the diet. If it's easier for you to just eat the same thing every day then just eat the same thing every day. This is a huge adjustment. Getting used to this diet takes quite a big um, change in mindset and in habits. And if you're trying to juggle new recipes and all kinds of things at the same time, it might just be too much. So if you want to keep it simple and just do like meat, chicken or fish and vegetables every day and that's just what you eat, then go for it. Just keep it simple and don't feel bad that you're not switching things up. That can come later once you're used to the diet. Find something that works and just stick to it. You might eat um, meat, chicken or fish plus vegetables for dinner, leftovers for breakfast and then just make soup that you have for lunch every single day. That's fine. Do big batches if that helps you so you're not having to think about cooking every day and just keep it simple. My next tip goes exactly the opposite to that. If you find that this diet is so restricted and so boring and that having the same meal every day is just making you crazy, then feel free to switch it up as much as you can. There are so many blogs and YouTube channels and um, resources out there for AIP recipes and different things that you can try. Go ahead, if that makes it easier for you to stick to the diet by trying lots of different new things, then go for it. There are so many resources out there, just make use of them and enjoy it. My next tip I would say is the most important one of them all. Just stick to it. It's so hard at the beginning, like not just physically hard to eat the same food all the time and to make the changes, but like emotionally, it's so hard. It's like this huge loss that you're suffering and all of the emotions that go with that and you can feel angry and resentful and all of these things but just stick to it because I promise you as hard as it is to start it it's going to be even harder to restart it knowing how hard it was to start it if that makes sense so once you begin stick with it keep going every single day you are achieving more and more healing and you're going to get more and more well so it's really worth just pushing through and doing this for your body 
Hopefully soon you'll begin to feel a whole lot better and then that will help you to keep going. But when it's hard and when it's in the beginning and you aren't really seeing any real results, just stick it out and keep going. Just be determined with it. Next tip is try to make extra when you cook your dinner or if you are making a batch of soup. Just make a whole bunch and then freeze it or have it in the fridge because that's one of the things that's horrible about AIP is it is inconvenient. You can't just grab a slice of toast. You can't just grab a packet of nuts when you're on your way out the door. And it can be really inconvenient to have to cook every time you want to eat something. So I would recommend cooking extra when you are cooking so that when you're really busy or when you push for time or exhausted or not feeling well, you can just grab something out of the freezer and you have a really nutritious, good AIP meal on hand. Next tip is make your own stock with extra bones and bits of meat and things. So what I'll often do is get a whole chicken, stick it in the crock pot with some water and that will kind of like roast in the crock pot and we'll use that for a meal. And then once I've stripped all the flesh off, because when you've cooked it in the crock pot it just kind of comes off really easily, you can just pull it off with a fork. I'll throw the whole carcass back into the crock pot, fill it up with water and let it run overnight. And then I've got this beautiful pot of um, nutritious chicken stock and you can either use that in the soup or put it in the fridge or freeze it. Now I do the same thing with bones if we have chops and we've been barbecuing a lot in the summer and we'll cut the meat off the chops rather than like gnawing it off and then I will just as we produce bones I'll just stick them into the freezer and when I have a full container I'll run it in the crock pot with water overnight and I've got bone broth and then I freeze that. So if you do that, you'll always kind of have your own stock on hand to use in recipes, to use in soups, um, to use to make your own sauces and things and whatever recipes you find, you're gonna need to make your own stock because then you know what's in it. Plus, you're really adding good nutrition in, which again, like I said, is key. All of those nutrients in the bones go into the bone broth and it's so good for you. And it's really vital as part of AIP to be adding those nutrients into your body. So it's super easy, just make your own stock and bone broth and make sure you always have some in the freezer. It doesn't really keep well in the fridge, it tends to go moldy. So unless you're gonna be using it in a couple days, just pop it into the freezer for when you are going to use it. My next tip is be sure not to go too low carb with it because that can really make you feel unwell and affect your energy and make you feel really tired and foggy and that's exactly the opposite of what you're trying to achieve with AIP. Now because the only carbs allowed on the diet is sweet potato and one serving of fruit a day, it's easy to go too low carb. So be sure to make sure you're having your serving of fruit a day and that you are including at least some sweet potato in all your meals. I'm not saying like make them all sweet potato based with a bit of meat and veg on top. You know, just half a sweet potato um, once or twice a day with your meals if you want to keep it fairly low carb or you know as much as you need to still feel energetic and to not have the, those low carb feelings. Just make sure you add that in. A tip that's really helped me, especially if you have a large family or um, any house guests, is to have what I call a safe shelf in the fridge. I've got one shelf in my fridge that my family knows if there's something on that shelf, it's mine. They can't tuck into it because um, it may be that we've barbecued some meats and some of them have spices and seasonings on, but mine hasn't because I can't tolerate those things. And so my meat will go onto my shelf. So if anyone's, you know, raiding the fridge for leftovers, they know not to touch mine because I'm counting on having that for breakfast the next day or for lunch or something. Um, so it's helpful to be able to have that shelf also so that when you open the fridge you can at a glance know yeah I've got food available for me to grab for lunch or dinner or whatever or no I don't I need to be making some meals to stock up because there's nothing worse than being really hungry and busy and you stop for lunch and you open the fridge and there's nothing there and you have to actually cook a meal that's really annoying like ain't nobody got time for that have your safe shelf so at a glance you know what's there and that nobody else is going to raid your food Okay, moving on to the reintroduction of foods. Now, I wouldn't be in a rush to reintroduce. You really wanna give your body time to heal and recover so that when you do reintroduce some foods, you have a greater chance of success. If you rush those reintroductions and try to do it too early, you could possibly have a bad reaction to that food and then you're not gonna know, like, oh, I can't ever eat this food again, my body just won't tolerate it or I was just too soon with that food and if I'd waited, I might have been able to tolerate it. So give yourself a really good chance of healing. I know some people go like a month or two. Um, 
I feel the longer you go before you start reintroductions, the more chance of like a true reaction you will have. So give your body time to heal before you start diving in. Now when you choose the foods to start reintroductions, be wise in what you're choosing. I know a lot of the blogs or information out there on how to do reintroductions will say start with ghee and start and then move on to butter and like, or you know, start with just the yolk of the egg and then move on to the whites. I'm never just going to eat egg yolks. Like that's pointless to me. I don't need to know like, oh I can tolerate egg yolks or no I can't. Because I'm never going to go and just like fry up an egg yolk. So I wouldn't bother with that. Like if I'm going to try egg, I'm going to try a whole egg and I can either eat it or I can't. Um, so that just makes sense to me. Like the things that I am going to risk an adverse reaction by reintroducing, they have to actually be of some benefit to me. I can't be like, oh great, you know, I tried egg yolks and now I can eat egg yolks. Like, how's that really going to change my diet? Not a whole lot. So um, when I chose what to, what I wanted to reintroduce, I thought, what am I missing the most? I'm, I'm missing peanut butter. I'm missing cheese. Yeah, really bad reaction to cheese. Apparently I can't ever eat cheese again. So suffering a loss, a bit of grieving and mourning going on. But anyway, um, I tried peanuts. Not a brilliant reaction. So if you're choosing what to reintroduce, something like reintroducing eggs would open up a whole world for you. You'll be able to make omelettes, you'll be able to make frittatas, you can thicken sauces with it. You know, there's like all kinds of things you can do by reintroducing eggs. Um, reintroducing, I don't know, tomatoes, that could also really open up. You can do sauces, you can do, you know, roasted tomatoes, you can have them in a salad. So that's quite versatile, but reintroducing something like sesame seeds, which like I can't eat either apparently, that's not going to open up a whole bunch. Like, yeah, you can eat sesame seeds, big deal. So for me personally, if I'm going to try reintroducing a food, risking that it's going to make me feel really unwell for a while and have a bad reaction to it, they've got to be worth it. Like they've got to be something that's really going to change my diet. So that would be my tip. Pick and choose what you try and reintroduce and make it worth it. Now if you do try and reintroduce a food and you do have a bad reaction to it, don't lose hope. Uh, you may have better luck in a year's time or in six months time with a little bit more healing going on in your body. You may be able to tolerate that food. Or um, for example, I was able to reintroduce eggs and cashews and then I had the flu really badly and I had strep throat so I was taking ibuprofen which is a no-no, it like destroys your gut and I was taking antibiotics, ditto and I was so sick and it took me months to recover from that and I couldn't tolerate eggs and cashews and I was like well can I eat them or can I not but with a bit more time and a bit more healing it's okay now so um, the state of your gut and the state of the inflammation in your body and the state of your health can determine whether or not you successfully reintroduce a food. So, like I said, if you reintroduce one and you have a bad reaction, don't lose hope. Um, the level of bad reaction I had to cheese, I will never try cheese again. I just have to accept, like, for me, I, I can accept, like, this is not worth the risk and just move on. Um, just because I reacted so badly that I don't see myself tolerating it now. If you have like a maybe reaction, give it a bit more time and try again. And yeah, if you have like a bad reaction, but that food is worth it to you, then give it more time, good few months, and then try again because you may be successful. So I hope some of these tips were helpful to you. It is so hard doing this. I know it is. I've been doing it now for uh, almost a year. Um, yeah, in a week or so, it'll be a year that I've been on AIP. I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune disease which affects the thyroid. And getting bioidentical thyroid hormones made a huge difference. And I'm working with the doctor to keep my medication at the right level and keep all that on track. Huge difference. But the other thing that has made the biggest difference to my health has been on AIP. I've been able to achieve more health, deal with fewer symptoms, and have more energy since doing this than before which is why I'm still on it a year in so I do highly recommend it if you are looking for something to um, help you deal with your autoimmune condition and give you the best chance of good health I highly recommend trying this and I hope that some of these tips are helpful if you want to chat about it if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and I will be sure to respond thanks for watching and I'll see you next time